Good morning. It is Friday, August 9th, one day before my birthday. Yes, my birthday is tomorrow. Um, I'll be 54, 54 years old. So uh, five years, four and a half years of retirement. It's a good thing. Um, Let's talk about the markets. Uh, Cues. I talked about 450 being a key point. We have seen a couple of days now. Where the market can't get over that 450. Where are we in pre-market? We're at 445. Yesterday felt damn good. The MACD, low. It's eight points below the oscillator on the Qs. Okay? The RSI, 44. That, you know, that, that would normally be a buying opportunity. Okay? But let's take a look at the weekly. And this is what I've been trying to say. The weekly, the, 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 the high this week is 449. We're trading at 445. We closed yesterday at 448. We can't get above that. That that is a resistance level, okay? We've seen this pullback. We're below the 9 day. We still have some downside available to us. Does it feel good? No. But understand this is the time when you want to do this. I'm going to go over what I made it in moves yesterday. I sold a bunch of things. I'll go over everything like that. I'll go over the spy targets. I'll go over the three reasons why I think you still should be bullish in this market. We will build a custom scanner in TrendSpider Live to show you how good their chat GPT integration is. Uh, we'll go over some other stuff, including a- another Friday and another uh, NVIDIA upgrade, price target upgrade. We'll go over all of that. But what I want you to point, what I want to point out is is that the MACD, remember on the four hour, it looked really good. It is still 14 points above the oscillator on the weekly though. We are still extended. The MAC, the, the RSI is only down at 50. It's 49.43, okay? We still have more downside if, to, if we are to go down, we are to go down a little bit more. And I'll show you, last year, in the middle of July, we hit a high, okay? This was a high of 384. So we can take that 384 and we can go down to the October lows. October 23rd, the low was 342. You take that down, it's about a 10% move. The only thing that is crazy about this move is the speed of this. That was two months, okay? This is one month where you're down about 15%. The speed of this was the only thing. The good things about the market, earnings continue to grow. That's good for upward movement of SPY. Remember, we went, and if you want to see on dailystockpick.substack.com, let's just open that up. Um, Because this is a free newsletter. You get it for free. During the week, it is absolutely free. And earlier this week, I I started posting the, 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 the points where you want to take a look. We'd said, SPY, 5,300, that's the current estimate, that's super bullish. Lower gro- If you lower growth, you get down to 5,000, okay? Bearish, lower growth, 44, 450, okay? Bearish, the ultimate bear with 5% growth and a 15 PE, that's 38.35. Doesn't, it doesn't align to the Qs, but again, this is a good thing that the S&P is growing earnings. Now, they're growing earnings 4% on an average 5, uh, 4% this year. The average five years, they're growing 8%. So it's slowing down a little bit. You just have to take out COVID. Now, the other thing is normalization of rates. We saw a 30-year bond auction, which didn't take the market down yesterday versus the 10-year bond auction on Wednesday, took the market down midday. And you've got coming up, again, the third good thing that you have in this market is the Fed rate cuts. So if you want to think about three three things that may take the, the, the market higher in the long term, that is it. We can take a look at, at, at the volatility index. And I've told you, I don't want to make huge moves, uh, huge buys in my portfolio until this VIX gets down below 20. And it's currently at 24. We can look at the, the five-day uh, portion of the VIX. You can see on Monday, we got up to 64. 
That's only happened two other times during the financial crisis and COVID. So we still have volatility in this market. I want it under 20. So between the charts, the VIX, and other things, it's a Friday. I wouldn't be making any big moves in your portfolio. I think, you know, again, if you want to track me on, on uh, uh, on the newsletter, it's free. I will post all of the charts. I will post everything for you. But when we look at these charts, it is super, super clear. And I will tell you, the cues when you run the four hour algorithm, it's right here. You got to buy at 448. You got to buy in. Do I want to buy in at 448? If my time frame is two to three years or even, you know, six to 12 months, I think that's not a bad buy. Because again, you've got growing earnings. We've talked about this. You've got the Fed rate cut. You've got some catalysts in here. You've got NVIDIA earnings on on, uh, August 28th. You've got all of those things. That's where I think you're you're fine. But do I want to load up into this? No. We're still in a downward trend. Look at that 50-day. It's still at the top of the Bollinger Band, and it's moving down. You haven't seen these Bollinger Bands cinch up. You haven't seen a huge like indicator tell me that there's a change in direction. The MACD is crossing up, but it's still, you know, on the weekly, still looks bad. So we've gone over this before. Patience. Patience. So over the 50% of the NASDAQ 100 names trade below their 200-day moving average. How can you find stuff like this, okay? We're going to do this live on the air. I'm going to go to the market scanner in, in, in TrendSpider right now, and I'm going to say, okay, I want to scan the NASDAQ. So we're just going to type in the NASDAQ, and I'm going to use add chat GPT function. And I'm going to say the daily uh, daily closes lower than the 200 period SMA, okay? And I'm going to apply this. And this is how you use your tools, okay? This is how you use it. It did it for me. It wrote that scan, okay? And I scan it. And then I can see all of these names in the NASDAQ 100 that are trading below their 200 day on the daily, okay? This is the four hour. If we just move this to a daily, you'll see the 200 days up here. That's Comcast. We can look at uh, Team, which is Alatsian. That one under its 200 day. You can look at Dollar Tree. We can look at that. The red line is the 200 day. How did I use this? Well, again, it's TrendSpider. If you want to sign up for TrendSpider, you use my link tree. It's the top link here. Okay, the top link gets you over to TrendSpider and you sign up. It's less than 50 bucks a month. You sign up annually. Somebody asked me, and it's in the socials, and I'll I'll read it exactly. Um, They asked me, Mr. Vaughn, this is Jay from uh, Spotify. He wrote a comment, and you can write comments on Spotify. I want to sign up for TrendSpider, but I'm not ready to purchase a whole year until I see what I like about it. Do your algorithms and other perks come along when you buy a whole, just for a whole year? And no, you can pay for monthly. The problem is the monthly is $107. So after a couple of months, if you like it, you're already done. What I told Jay was you can you, you can buy the monthly. It's just super expensive. I'll still give you my my algorithms and and the links to import it. But if you're new to trade t- technical trading, then I what I would do. I, and again, this is just me. I would sign up for Weeble. Weeble's right here, the fourth link. And I would get a a a, a charting program. If you have Fidelity, it's Active Trader Pro. If you have a TD Ameritrade, which I think is now Morgan Stanley, it's Thinkorswim. If you have E-Trade, you have charting platforms for free. I wouldn't tr- get TrendSpider if I'm brand new to charting. I would learn technical trading on a free tool. Because what TrendSpider does is it just gives you that ability to take the training wheels off. And with chat GPT integration, it is that good. You can read an article like this and then go and scan the tool and you can say, okay, say you just want your own watch list. Okay. You want to scan your own watch list in this. You just scan this, take this and you say, you know what? I've got the daily stock pick watch list. Which ones are the ones that are trading under the 200 day? Let's scan this one. 
and it will scan those. We've got Shopify. We talked about that one being under its 200 day. We got Duolingo. We talked about that one just having earnings. We talked about Okta, which is an alpha pick. Uh, GBTC, which is Bitcoin. That's trading under its 200 day. Uh, TEX, which is Terex Corporation. And the watch list comes from both Alpha Picks, Motley Fool, and my own personal stuff. So again, that's how you use these tools. If you want TrendSpider, I'd say use it, you know, get my four hour algorithm and sign up through me because that's the benefit that you get. But if you're worried about, hey, it's a lot, $642 is a lot. And un- I understand that's a hell of a lot of money. But in this downturn, if you lost more than $642 and you think that in your uh, in your own system, you could take a motion out of the trade and actually go in and just use my four-hour algorithm and say, you know what, in the queues, let's just look at the queues. Uh, in the queues, I know Gary's algorithm, uh, let's put it on the queues, it, on the queues, I know Gary's algorithm makes me, let's see what, what it back tested for two years, makes me 38%. I make 41% if I buy and hold, but I'm losing sleep at night. It made me 13% and it got me out. Understand that you do have to know how these technicals work. The strategy is built. You can see it when you put it in, but if you don't know how these technicals work, it's not going to make a whole lot of sense to you. So uh, learn Learn technical trading, okay? I I like that. You can do it daily. You can do it weekly, whatever you want to do. But you can. that's how easy it is to build a strategy and a scanner. Now, the strategy also includes exits. The scanner is just entry. So it will scan on things that you want to buy. But the, the strategy tells you when to enter and when to exit. And you can see this. Now, am I buying this 448? Nope. 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 So what I want to do is show you also Apple, because Apple is a perfect example of what just happened this week. Uh, Buffett said on Saturday last week, it was a week ago, that have you, uh, you know, he sold, what, 50% of his Apple? So Buffett said he sold it. I mentioned buying Apple under 200 was the play. If you did that, you're up 7 to 8% this week on that buy now. Apple is down in pre-market. I don't know how, what will happen over the weekend, but this is good. This is TrendSpider saying this is an absolute retest of the, the previous highs. And you can see that. Remember we talked about how uh, you know 200 was a resistance level? It is now support. And this is a great example. Have you ever seen a more uh, perfect retest? And what a retest means is it went up to 237 and then it came back down to 200. That's just a retest. If it uses as as support, you can be guaranteed that that is support. If it goes below that, then again, we've lost that support and it turns into resistance again. So where are we th- with Apple right now? You're trading at 211. It's in that medium term and it's using, you know, again, you're up 7% if you bought on the lows. But that's an example of when a reaction in the market is an overreaction. And I like that one. So CNBC yesterday, Stephanie Link brought more CrowdStrike and Amazon. I agree with both of those. Just understand CrowdStrike, I think, is a great buy. Uh, in fact, I think I bought more yesterday. I'm not sure, but it might have been the, the, just the other day. I did sell a lot, and we'll go into that. But CrowdStrike here at 240, it's a good buy. I mean, closing at 240, let's see, in pre-market, you're at 243. You've got these gaps, and I told you, I I didn't buy at 200, where the, the algorithm said to buy in. I bought at like 234, 233, somewhere in that neighborhood, because I want to test this. This You have confirmation. We talked about the nine-day being confirmation. I like that. So Stephanie Link, who I totally respect, this is her first buy of CrowdStrike. She wasn't in at 300. She said it got cheaper. And she believes in the actual technology. She believes in the cybersecurity of that. She sold out of Fortinet. I told you I sold out of Fortinet on my dad. I sold 50% of it. She sold out of Fortinet and bought CrowdStrike. So I like that one. I like it a lot. Okay, uh, outside of that, let's talk about, I raised about $50,000 of cash yesterday. And there's a couple of things that I I, I wanted to go over and, and just strategy. I had said it before that I was looking at this week to rebalance my portfolio. I think I announced that Friday of last week. 
Um, I said I want to use next week to rebalance my portfolio if we continue to see some weakness. So we had SMCI earnings. The, the margins were the only thing that came about. We haven't seen this one come all the way back. You're trading at 5.11 right now. This one on a weekly still has room to go down. It's almost there, but I would expect it at the top of this kind of range right here at about 450 to absolutely have support. Now, it doesn't mean it's not going to go down. You can see the volume profile just went straight up and then came straight down. You're seeing if we move this back, uh, I'm going to move this volume profile here in TrendSpider to the really the beginning of this run, which was May of 2023. You can see where are people holding. They're holding at 300. That's where I had a, a large portion of my buy was between 200 and 300. I sold out yesterday. So I assigned the sale to my purchase and my brokerage account to December. And the reason that I did that was because that was still about 100% gain. And it's to cover short-term losses from GCT, which I, I, I got out of in my brokerage account. Again, these are all brokerage accounts. I still hold GCT in my uh, in my uh, retirement account. I got out of DocU. DocU was, a, you know, I'll go over everything. And I got out of Ulta. I did not sell out of SMCI. It's just a trim. I sold about half of it in my brokerage account. My plan is to add that back in my retirement account. Right now in my retirement account, I'm sitting at a loss on SMCI, but I will dollar cost average because I do like the forward profile of this name. That's just it. But I took those gains from 200 to about you know 500, and I took those gains and I wrote it against the losses. So now I don't have to pay taxes on those gains. It was it's not a, an optimal strategy, but it's tax loss harvesting. So any of those names, GCT, Docu, and Ulta, if I want to buy them, I will buy them 30 days from now. And that is before the Fed meeting. And any of these that I sold out of that I took a loss on, I will be able to buy before the Fed meeting. That's why I did it this week. So we talked about SMCI. Why did I sell out of uh, Oxy when Warren Buffett is buying Oxy? Well, I, there's two things. Because look at this chart over one year of MPLX over Oxy. Oxy over one year is down 6.96%, okay? MPLX is up 29%. 29%. If I want energy, I'm going to go with MPLX. Does it have another 29% in it? I don't know. Does Oxy outperform it? I don't know. But when we look at, at, at the summary of, uh, of MPLX, it's a buy. The valuation's a B plus. When you, you go and look at peers, we're going to take a look at this because I want to take a look at the actual PE and the valuations of MPLX versus Oxy. So we're going to edit these symbols. And again, this is how you use these tools that I have. It's Seeking Alpha and it's TrendSpider. We're going to take a look at this one. We're going to take a look at Oxy. Uh, and we're going to say, okay, where do, and the other one, you know what? I'll put in Berkshire as well, because if you want to follow Buffett, just buy Berkshire. And so that's what my learning is about this Apple stuff. If you want to follow Buffett, just buy Berkshire. If you want to follow Buffett into Oxy, just buy Berkshire or buy an energy into MPLX because he said it. Now, quant rating of Berkshire, strong buy. Strong buy, you know, the quantity rating of Oxy is a hold. When you look at it, it's the valuation that Oxy is ba bad on. Now, I, I made this determination after their earnings. When you look at the PE, it's 15. I can buy Berkshire at about 20, but I can buy MPLX at 10. Okay? When I look at the PEG, are they growing? They're at 1. MPLX is at 2. So Oxy probably has a better growth profile but, you know, Berk, I'll just buy Berkshire. I don't like the one-year performance. When you look at the revenue growth, Oxy is declining by 13% per year, year over year. MPLX is actually growing. The forward, you know, Oxy is projecting a 6% revenue decline. So profitability, you can see they're about the same, about the same. You know, Berkshire, lower margin. But if you, my, my thought was, if I want to follow Buffett, I'll just do that. So that was the, the reason. Now, GCT, I sold because I know that 25 is the support level. And it's been holding that support level, but it seems to have lost it. 
And so that now becomes a resistance level at 2425. It's making its way back up. But I didn't like it. I did I can buy it back 30 days from now. The the earnings are done. The the pop on this one, they're going to have another short sellers report. I just didn't I wanted to take the loss and if it pops, I'll buy it again. I still have exposure in my retirement account. Docu, I bought. It's just overpriced. I'll chalk that one up to a loss. I bought it because somebody was saying they were going to buy it. It popped to 65, 66. I bought it at like 59 or 60. I sold it. Ulta, I'm getting out of beauty. I learned my lesson. The, the journal on that one was, hey, I'm just not a beauty guy. I expect it to bounce back up to 400 at some point, but right now I don't expect it to do that. So their earnings are coming up. It might be good. It might be good, but... I just talked about, you know, hey, I just want to get out of that one. Now, Truist re, uh, reinstates tech sector to overweight status after sharp sell-off. So selling off the consumer stuff was my focus. I want to get into more tech. This is the way I'm going to do it. So XLK, heavy uh, heavy um, uh, NVIDIA profile. So yeah, I'm going to do it. After reading this, I want I want to take those that money and I want to get into tech. But I want to be patient about it. And I don't want to buy on a Friday. I'm going to be patient about it. That's my learning from the past few times that I've done this. I'm not traveling. I did some rush trades when I was traveling. I'm going to be patient about it. So a lot of people, uh, you know, talk. I had a Tesla guy here uh, yesterday. Or I'm sorry, Wednesday. And he fixed my car. I had a problem with the, the right front headlight, which he said is is pretty normal. Uh, they replaced it under warranty. Tesla is great for service, by the way. I don't Anybody complaining about Tesla service just probably has their expectations too high. It's a great, great company. This guy is OG. I think he started working for Tesla in like 2016. Probably a multimillionaire just based on the stock options that he has, but he loves his job and he has been fantastic. He told me that he's using full self-driving on a daily basis now. Uh, and and he said it's gotten really good. I still don't use it around like local driving, but I love it on the highway. This is a great article about robo-taxi fleet race heats up with Tesla, Waymo, Zooks, Uber, Lyft, and BYD in the mix. I thought this was a great article. They talk about how they used uh, Tesla's full self-driving. They talk about who uses uh, NVIDIA. They talk about Uber and Lyft kind of sitting around. It's a good article. If you're interested in that and you want to read about it, this is a good article. It will be in the newsletter. We talked about Palantir being uh, popping to 30. It's a 29, 28. And what, what did it take to get there? A partnership with Microsoft. And this is game changing for Palantir. I don't think it changes my thesis that this one gets to 30 and pulls back to 25. I don't think it changes my thesis. Now, I could be completely wrong about this, but I don't think it changes my thesis. When I look at the weekly, could it go above 30? Absolutely. You're seeing back here, 29.19. You're seeing uh, 29.29. You're seeing it pull back after 29. Until that becomes a support level, it is resistance. I think 25 was resistance. It turned into support. So I think between 25 and 30, I think that's a good name. Read about this partnership. It's an interesting one. Okay, Palantir moves from having like a 30-day thing to a three-day thing. Again, with Microsoft's cloud, they partner up. I like this. I, I like both names. I own a ton of Microsoft. I don't own Palantir. I, I wish I would have bought Palantir before the earnings, but I didn't. I didn't trust that 25. Now that it's hitting 30, I will buy it when it pulls back to 25. I'll just have patience. And if I don't get it, I don't get it. I probably got it in an ETF somewhere. That's just it. Now it's another Friday and it's another price, tyke, price uh, hike for NVIDIA. Uh, Rakesh upped his price target. This is from Mizuho. Upped his price target to 132 from 127. That's not a big move. Now, yesterday we saw it go 6%. I continue to say, the closer you get to 100, uh, again, if you're buying five shares, the difference between 104 and 100 is 20 bucks. Don't lose your shit for 20 bucks. Could this come down to, 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 to uh, 80? Absolutely. Uh, but I'm seeing a lot more people add to this. Look at how high that MACD is on the weekly. Okay, the RSI at 54. 
the last couple of times you had the 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 opportunity to buy this under uh, you know close to that at 58 and at 51 on the weekly the RSI it took off and so their earnings are uh, August 27 28 26 27 somewhere in that neighborhood get it if you don't have exposure to it get the XLK XLK owns a ton of this stuff so if you want it, some some uh, some some insulation from it get XLK but again, have exposure to Nvidia in your in your portfolio. I'm not saying that this one won't go down 20%. It absolutely could. But in my mind, this is one you want to buy. I do think that this is one you want to buy. Uh, why? Taiwan Semi just announced July sales surge 45% amid AI chip demand. If you don't think that th- this includes Nvidia. You're out of your mind. You're just not reading the market well enough. That what's taking Nvidia down are these option plays, and the option plays are playing zero DTE options on Nvidia, and it's keeping it down there. And and when they blow it away, you're gonna see that stock pop. Now, if they even uh, you know mention Blackwell delay, you might see it fall. But I think over a year, the valuation makes sense in both Taiwan Semi. And uh, NVIDIA. You just have to worry about China. That's it. Uh, Let's talk about the biggest stock movers of the day. One of them I brought up yesterday. Uh, Trading Desk was up 12%. I said it yesterday. This one was set up nicely. It's set up super nicely. This is where you use both the, uh, the technicals and the fundamentals. This one's set up nicely. It does have a $100 uh, uh, cap on it. So if you bought yesterday at 86, you're trading right now at $90. It's up 2%. But you went all the way up. I mean, we can look at the 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 five minute on the after hour. We'll include after hours here. You can see it was up here at 94, 95. It popped all the way to 90, 90 looks like 95, 95, 90. Would have been a great buy at, at 86. I mean, we can go to the four hour and run this. So, you know, we don't want the after hours and the four hour algorithm. That's what you don't want. But if you bought it at 86 and you got up to 95, great, great play. Uh, it popped 11%, 12%. I do own this in my dad's portfolio, full disclosure. So, uh, But some of the other big movers, Paramount Global rose 5% on mixed Q2. I still say by Netflix, Expedia jumped. Again, somebody's telling some of these travel names that that the, the consumer's not weak. Um, they're growing. And Elf, Elf dived 10%. Uh, I got out of beauty. Again, it points to a weak consumer in certain segments of the population. That's what it does. So it raised its forecast. I don't know what else is doing right now. We can look at ELF. Uh, pre-market, it's down 10%. So it is what it is. Now, one that I thought was interesting was SoundHound. This is one where uh, you heard that uh, NVIDIA had put some money into it and, and it popped it popped 21% yesterday. Now, in pre-market, it's down 2%. I thought it was interesting that they announced a deal to acquire Amelia AI, and then they announced earnings, and the earnings beat. And that huge pop, I think, was just from the announcement. Now, do you want to get into this one? This is highly speculative. It's not making money. They do have a deal where they, they do have revenue. So it's not a, you know, oh my God, this company's going to go bankrupt. We can take a look at some of the stuff on Finviz. But when you look at it, the valuation is B, the profitability is an F. I mean, that's just it. Revisions, they're taking it down. This is one you want to trade. I don't know that this is what, you know, their market cap right now is $1.71 billion. This dude on the analysis, the voice AI make could be worth $100 billion. Pay up for SoundHound. Now, I wouldn't want to chase this one. Uh, year to date, you are up 145%. So where do you get into this one? Well, the algorithm just had a buy-in at 507. You're trading at 509. Not a horrible price, but I would tell you that I'd probably wait three days after their earnings to get into this. You may want to, you know, the, the algorithm makes you 502% versus 32% uh, in 24 months. So you win uh, 41% of the time. Your average win is 49%. That includes this crazy 252% win that you got when uh, it was announced that NVIDIA was putting money in. It included this pullback and then confirmation where you got this nice 25% gain. 
So, you know, maybe the 65 minute algorithm makes a little bit more sense for you because that brings the the price in. You make 220% versus 149% over eight months with the 65 minute algorithm. Again, it got you in at $4.94. Super positive on the uh on the the confirmation right there. Big move right before earnings. I just think that you want to wait at least three days after this type of pop to actually get into this name. That would be my guidance for you. So I thought that was interesting. Now, an interesting crypto strategy. Uh, I own micro uh, micro strategy, MSTR and iBit as my two retirement accounts on Bitcoin. But what's interesting is Bitcoin weekly chart. They're saying, hey, it's always been a good one to buy on the bottom end of the Bollinger Band. Again, I showed you how to do that scan. You can set up that scan and you can set up any exit that you want and back test it in TrendBiter. So you can find a strategy that works for Bitcoin for you in TrendSpider. Go and do it. Go and do it. Uh, Jacob from Facebook, uh, thoughts on KNTK. Uh, I hold MPLX already. Should I get into this one? KNTK. Let's see. KNTK. This is Kinetech Holdings. I don't know anything about this. We'll go and we'll look at this. But Kinetech Holdings, um, we're in the 65 minute. Let me get back to the four hour real quick because I don't like trading stuff. I feel more comfortable with the four hour kind of looking at stocks. So this one is put in a shelf right here at about 40. You're trading at 41. Looks like the MACD has reset itself. You've had your earnings. Your uh, RSI is kind of there. Let's go and look at KNTK in uh, Seeking Alpha to see what it is. Uh, My assumption is since you mentioned MPLX, it's oil. Yeah, it's energy. Let's see what they do. Uh, We'll go down here. Kinetech operates midstream company in Texas, Delaware Basin. I would say if you've got MPLX, I don't know what the interest in this one would be. Um, we can go and take a look at the valuation B. It's a buy. We can look at the peers. Maybe MPLX is the peer. I think they they compete against each other. If I'm not, let's just take a look and we'll we'll edit the symbols. We'll get rid of all of these other ones. And and again, you're gonna have to go into more of a um a, a look into this. I only own MPLX, and MPLX has been a winner for me. I liked it. Uh, seeking Alpha cover us. I mean, you know, it's got a super, super small market cap versus MPLX. MPLX is forty-two billion. Uh, Kinetech is six point two billion. Wall Street analysts covering about the same. They're both buys. Looks like MPLX has a, a smaller growth profile. So when you look at the dividends, seven point two five for Kinetech. MPLX is at eight. When you look at the total return. Uh, three month return. When you look at six month, Kintech is 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 significantly more on the uh, the six month. Nine month, they're about the same. Year to date, they're about the same. One year, they're about the same. Uh, three years, MPLX beats them. So maybe Kintech is just growing more than MPLX. Dividend yield a minus. Uh, dividend consistency that might be an issue for you. Uh, PE. It looks like Kintech's just more expensive. Um, that's kind of where my thing is. What I don't know, um, Jacob, is what would be your interest in this one over MPLX. And and so I don't know your portfolio. I don't know your risk tolerance. I don't know exactly what you're looking for. But it seems like they're pretty complementary to each other. And for me personally, I just own MPLX. Uh, BLD, BD for James on Facebook. He asked me about this one. And he said, hey, what, what interests you about the chart? Um, my thing about BLBD is nothing more than it's an alpha pick and it's been an alpha pick and, and it's doing really, really well. One year you're up 132%. When you look at the valuation, the growth, the profitability, it's all A's. It's a strong buy in the quant and they just had earnings. Now, what interests me about this one? He said, Hey, the weekly looks good, but what about the four hour? It is an alpha pick. So I told James uh, on Facebook, it's an alpha pick. And it gets you in here at 48.57. Now, the algorithm makes you 335%. Buying and holding over 24 months makes you 342%. Your average win is 25%. You can see this recent one got you 55%. So you win 43% of the time. Um, Again, I think this one is just an alpha pick. So I don't think that even the four hour, I don't think it's worth it doing it. The valuation is good. When you look at the weekly, 
it looks like it's pulled back a little bit. And it looks like that MACD is super high. Looks like the RSI. You can probably wait for this one to come down. But again, from an alpha pick, the, the, the valuation, and this is what I would be looking at more than, than the actual chart. I would just be using the chart to find an entry. That's all I would do. And from a four hour, you just got the signal to buy an entry. Do I want to buy it? Ugh, I'm not huge into like yellow school buses, but they did announce earnings and it was a good earnings pop. I mean, this is an 8.21%. You could have bought it right after earnings at the open for $45. Okay. It c closed at $48. The high was $49. That's a big move. That's a big move in a company that I personally wouldn't have minded holding because it's an alpha pick and it's got good valuation. So that's kind of my thought on that one. So when I post something like that, that would be my thought process. The, R, the, the MACD is below the oscillator. The RSI is 44. Again, the 200-day is moving positive. The 50-day is moving negative. But those earnings were good. So I went over uh, Jay's comments about TrendSpider at the beginning. Daniel Pro, uh, Proia, he wrote me on LinkedIn. Hi, Gary. I'm, I'm so glad I found your podcast on Spotify. I'm truly enjoying it. I feel like your investment strategies and goals are very similar to mine. My dad and I are day traders and bought NVIDIA back the, in the day at $10.87. Kudos. Kudos. God, I hope you're retired, Daniel. We have enjoyed every split and sold a few shares here and there. Take advantage of it. Uh, in other stacks, CrowdStrike, like CrowdStrike. However, I always like to keep a few strong dividend stocks within the core portfolio. And I was wondering what your thoughts were about HTGC. Let's look up HT's, HTGC. Um, this is Hercules Capital. Sounds like a REIT to me, but let's take a look at it. They have a strong dividend, 10%. I think this might be a good one to hold into the retirement account. The quant rating continues to recommend holding and never a history of a sell rating. I would appreciate your advice on this. Thanks and have a great evening. So here's the, the four hour looks decent on this one. It ha doesn't have you in, but it probably will get you in at some point in time. Their ex-dividend date is August 13th. So if you're interested in the dividend, you buy it. Their last earnings doesn't look like it was very good. So let's take a look at this one. HT. GC, Hercules Capital. Let's see what it is because I think it's probably a REIT. Financials, Asset Management and Custody Banks. So is a business development company for providing private equity venture debt and growth capital to privately held venture capital backed companies. Um, I mean, it's a hold. If we take a look at the quant history on this one, it's been a like a buy here at eighteen dollars, and you're back to eighteen. It got all the way up to twenty one. Um, from a dividend perspective, you're looking at forward ten point four one. Daniel, here's my thoughts on dividends. What do you need income for? I mean, if if you're just looking at income, you're you're not your picture doesn't make you look like you're old enough to where you need income. So. Uh, personally, I've always been a growth over income. And, and when I need income, it, it's a little bit later. So um, so let's take a look at uh, do, 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 do select symbols. We're going to say, I mean, look at it's one year, it's uh, three year. We'll, we'll select metrics because I want to include the total return, not just price return. Uh, and you take a look at this. Hercules Capital over three years, the total return's good. Uh, five years? Total return's good. It's beating the S&P. Uh, you know, if we select symbols and we go QQQ, which is my kind of guide, if you can beat QQQ uh, long-term, it's not bad. Q, the Q is up 146 over five years. HTGC is up uh, 156. The, the one thing you have to worry about is, will they stop paying that, that dividend? Because the dividend, if you just look at select metrics and we just look at performance and just price return, if for some reason that dividend is taken out, then you're having over five years the, the, the Qs. So that would be my thing. And, and I just don't like, I'd rather have the growth than the actual dividend because I don't need income. And so if you, if you need income, uh, you can put that in there. I don't think it's a bad choice at all. I think it's a very good choice. Um, you can take a look at some of the seasonality of it uh, to see if it trades well. But you can see revenue annual going up, um, you know, quarterly. I mean, they're, they're doing well quarterly and annually. Earnings per share quarterly, 
looks like they're beating it. So again, I, I I don't think it's a bad one. It's just probably not my cup of tea. But hey, if you like having something like that, then have at it. Um, you know, just I don't think it's a bad one at all, to be honest with you. Uh, let's talk about some cross ups. The main one, Nvidia. Nvidia is up one point three one percent. So, um, one hundred and five dollars twenty two cents. It's trading at one oh six. Like I said, I think Nvidia is just one to buy. Uh, we're gonna go over just a couple because there are a lot of names in the scans. Yesterday with it up three uh, percent. Again, how's that bond portfolio working out for you? Probably not real great. But Google, uh, here it is, one hundred and sixty three. I, I think anything between this one fifty one and one seventy one, I think you're okay buying it. I loved the Google AI stuff. XLK, if you want um, exposure to the tech sector, specifically a heavy exposure to NVIDIA, but you want some insulation, XLK. It's at 204. It will rebalance. They took out Apple and put NVIDIA in there. Uh, Microsoft has a cross-up. This one, around $400. Just keep adding to it. I think they'll do fine. Their earnings are done. I mean, the earnings, the pop is done, 403. You can see the entry in the uh, the algorithm. We talked about Qs. I think this one capped at 450 until it's not. So the Q's right there. Pan W. I bought some CrowdStrike. Pan W has a cross up here. It's trading at 319. Their earnings are coming up later this month, right around, I think it's the week, yeah. Next week, August 20th, or I'm sorry, the week after. 315. Is this one you want to get into? Well, I take a look at that weekly chart, and the MACD has reset while it's gone sideways, okay? This one, in my mind, not a bad play. Again, you have to believe that Palo Alto is going to continue on their promise of growing. That's the biggest thing. But it's cybersecurity. Who's shutting that down? Uh, FBCG, which is a great ETF. You know, th- this one has a buy. This one over two years, you make 43% in the algorithm versus 54% buy and hold. I would argue you buy and hold. You look for an entry. 3886, not a bad entry. When you look at this weekly, okay, the, the four hour looks like it reset. But when you take a look at the weekly, still looks like you might have downside, but you're using that 50 day as support at 35. This is a buy and hold. Just buy and hold it. VRT, QQQM, PINS, Devon, Q, uh, AVGO, Broadcom, CAT, uh, Skyworks, MongoDB, Zscaler, Twilio. The, the list is long. Get the list at the newsletter for free right here. You'll get it. I'll publish it right after I'm done with this. Uh, and let's talk about supporting me. Uh, because again, I, t- I told you, if you're new to j- new to actual charting, get a free charting program. Use Weeble. They have a desktop charting program. They have the best mobile app. It is by far my favorite mobile app uh, for, for charting. Uh, I like it. I like it better than TrendSpider's you know, mobile app, to be honest with you. So if, if you want a mobile app, if you want to learn technical stuff, just download Weeble. Now, if you already know some technical stuff and you want to get a little bit more into it, take the training wheels off. TrendSpider is your go. TrendSpider is an amazing, amazing platform. You sign up for it and you get to this page and then you choose whatever plan you want and and go and get it and then email me. Go back to the link tree. Email me up here and I will send you a welcome letter. Just take a screenshot of your account to show me the email address that you use to to sign up uh, for TrendSpider. And I'll send you back four-hour algorithm, 65-minute algorithm, all of my uh, custom watch lists, custom scanners, everything. Uh, the other thing that I, you saw me use was Seeking Alpha Premium, okay? $25 off your membership, a free seven-day trial. Click on this link in Linktree, and you'll get $25 off. Now, you heard me talk about Bluebird. Bluebird is one of the alpha picks. These are stocks that I've never heard of. But the performance of the actual portfolio is what you're buying. 114% versus 38%. I included yesterday in the newsletter. Yesterday at the top of the newsletter, uh, you know, once I got through all of this stuff, here's the year-to-date performance. Okay, the S&P is up 9%. But Alpha Picks portfolio is up 23%. You get the percentage of the portfolio to do it. So say you have $5,000. You can actually buy all 32 
of your uh, of the alpha picks in the percentage that the portfolio has them. It gives you all of that. These are two stock picks per month, once on the 1st, once on the 15th. They tell you the exact day when to sell when they take it out of the portfolio. They email you. So everything that you need, this is basically a service where if you don't understand fundamentals, again, the technicals, you can learn them. Uh, you know, you can use TrendSpider. This is a fundamental platform. These guys just base it on fundamentals and they give you all of the fundamentals that they go over. So if you want to learn that, this is the portfolio for you. Now let's talk about other things in the, 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 the link tree. Okay. Visible. It's the phone service I use. The link is right down there. Using my link, you get $20 off your first month. Well, what are the plans? The, again, this is Verizon. This isn't some like hunky dory, like mint.com or any one of those. You can get for $25, $20 a month. You get $20 off your from the friend code. So $20 off. Again, your first month is is, is free. If you use this, you get 24 months of visible for $20 a month. You know, I think if you pay uh, monthly, it's twenty dollars a month. You pay annually, it's two hundred seventy-five. You save twenty-five dollars, you get a free month. But again, my uh, referral code saves you twenty dollars. Now, the other referral code that I have is for AT and T. If you want a wireless service or fiber service, fiber service—that's what I use in my house. I have gig service. I have gig service at my house. That's why you see me in such stunning clarity every day. But check the availability there. There, use that one. Now, if you made money or for my birthday or you want to say thank you, I got Cash App. I've got Venmo. I've got PayPal. I've got it all up there for you. You can follow my trades on Savvy Trader if you want. The core portfolio is 100% free to follow. I've also got a trading portfolio up there that I updated before I updated uh, the, the newsletter. The paid subscribers on the newsletter, they got it about the same time when I actually did the, the portfolio update. So again, all of these things support me. I thank you for your support. I thank you for listening. Uh, if I can do anything for you, just message me. Again, that that email address, it's up there. It's open. Uh, you know, not to you know invite anybody, but my DMs are open. <laughs> so if you have any questions, hit me up. You guys have a great weekend. Again, I think we're going to end the week uh, on a positive note. Um, I don't know that the, today will be positive, but after Monday. Anything we close today at that's not down 5 6%, I think it's a positive note. Uh, keep your eyes on the queues because we're down about 0.31 now at 446. If we, uh, if we run into the close and you close over 450, I'd be a little bit nervous uh, but happy because, you know, again, we're going into a weekend where there's some uncertainty in the Middle East. Um, there's some election issues. There's some consumer issues. And we're still extended on the weekly. So I, I would be very, very cautious about what you do today. Uh, I'm not making any sudden moves. I may add some to my, my portfolio, but I'm definitely not making any sudden moves. So if you have any questions, hit me up. Okay, say okay, bye. Morning, I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. Daily stock day trading podcast in my and fears.